Some of you might love to solve puzzles. It is very interesting, isn't it? Do you know that even our world map is a puzzle? Can you make an attempt to solve it? If you solve the world map puzzle, that is, if you put all the continents together, it will look something like this. In fact, this is how our world looked millions and millions of years ago. Millions of years ago, the continents were not separated, but rather all belonged to a singular landmass called Pangaea. And in fact, the oceans were also not separated and there was a single super ocean called Panthalassa. So in this picture, we can see how our world looked millions of years ago. We can see that there are no separate continents, rather all the continents are connected and the landmass is called Pangaea and there was a super ocean called Pantharasa. So now you must be wondering what caused these continents to drift apart. A German meteorologist named Alfred Wegener formulated a theory to explain how the continents got drifted and how the modern world was formed. The theory is called the continental drift theory. This theory defines how the continents got separated millions of years ago and eventually led to the formation of the new world where we live in today. In this picture, we can see different periods associated with Earth's formation. The first one is the Carboniferous Age. In this picture, we can see that during Carboniferous Age, that is around 225 million years ago, there were no separate continents, rather all belonged to a singular landmass known as Pangaea. Now, eventually, Pangaea split into several smaller continents and this transition took place around 150 million years ago and this period is known as Triassic period. So in Triassic period, Pangaea bifurcated into two landmass known as Laurasia and Gondwana. Now Laurasia and Gondwana further bifurcated into smaller continents around 100 million years ago and this period is known as Jurassic period. And finally from Jurassic periods the continents further divided and led to the formation of the new world where we live in today. So this is how our earth looks today but million and millions of years ago our earth looked like this. So Continental drift theory framed by Alfred Wegener defines how Pangaea gradually fragmented and led to the formation of our new world where we live in today. So now we know that initially our continents was not like this as we see it today. So how do we get to know about Pangaea or the old world? See if you look at the continent of Africa and South America, we can see that they fit like two pieces of jigsaw puzzle. See, see, look at the shape of Africa and South America. These two continents actually fit together like the pieces of jigsaw puzzle. Now, apart from this shape of landmass, we also have other evidences that justifies the continental drift theory. Wegener discovered fossils of same flora and fauna in different continents. For instance, the fossil of Mesosaurus was found both in Africa and South America, as you can see in this picture. Now, let me tell you that Mesosaurus is an extinct reptile which could not have crossed the vast Atlantic Ocean present between these two continents owing to its body structure. So, from this we can conclude that Mesosaurus belonged to one particular habitat or lived in one place. So, 
Africa and South America were not separated and there was no Atlantic Ocean between them. Again, he found the fossil of Glossopteris in different continents. See, it is found here in India. Again, it is found in Africa and South America. But Glossopteris is a fauna. Now, it is not possible for a tree to travel across continents. So, from this, it can be concluded that the continents were not separated, but they were grouped together and they had similar environmental and geographical conditions because of which same flora and fauna were found there. Thus, these evidences and the shape of the continents validate or authenticate the continental drift theory framed by Wegener. Now before we proceed with our lesson, can you help me to answer this question? Name the two continents that represent jigsaw fit. Is it Europe and Africa, North America and South America or South America and Africa or Africa and Australia? Well, the correct answer is South America and Africa. We just saw in our previous image that the shape of South America and Africa fits together and they represent jigsaw fit. Now, Wegener had further justifications for his theory of continental drift. He stated three justifications for the drift of continents. The first one is Earth's rotation. The second one is tide, that is alternate rise and fall in water level. And the third one is Earth's gravity. But later on, it was proved that plate tectonics is a major cause for continental drifts. So, by 1968, The theory of continental drift was amalgated with the theory of plate tectonics. So, plate tectonics is an important cause for continental drift. So, now let's see how these two theories are correlated. See, this is our world map. We are very much familiar with this world map. This world map represents the continents and oceans found on Earth's surface. Now, the Earth's surface where several continents and oceans can be found is divided into several tectonic plates. See, in this image, we can see that the Earth's surface is divided into several tectonic plates. See, this is one plate. This is one plate and these lines represent the divisions of the tectonic plates. There are six major tectonic plates. The first one is the North American and the South American plate. The North American plate and the South American plate together is called the American plate and this plate comprises of the continents of North America and South America. The second one is the Pacific plate. Pacific plate comprises of the oceanic crust that is Pacific plate mostly consists of the Pacific Ocean and the adjoining coastal areas of the continents. See another part of Pacific plate is also present here because we know that the earth is round. So here we have one part of Pacific plate and there we have the remaining part of Pacific plate. The third tectonic plate is the Eurasian plate. It comprises of the continent of Europe and most of Asia. The fourth one is the African plate. African plate consists of the continent of Africa. The next one is the Indo-Australian plate. Indo-Australian plate comprises of the Indian Ocean and the continent of Australia. The last one is the Antarctic plate. Antarctic plate comprises of the continent of Antarctica. Apart from this, there are six major tectonic plates that I have just discussed. Now, these tectonic plates are part of lithosphere and they float on asthenosphere. 
Now you can pause the video and use the I dictionary feature to revise about asthenosphere. Now these tectonic plates are not stationary but they float on asthenosphere that is they are in constant motion. So now let's see what causes these tectonic plates to move. So before studying about the movement of plate tectonics, let me tell you what is plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is a theory which states that the earth's crust or lithosphere is divided into irregular and massive slabs of rocks called plates. These plates vary in thickness and size. These plates may be 100 kilometers thick that is the width of this plate may be approximately 100 kilometers and these plates may be 1000 kilometers wide. So the thickness and the size of the tectonic plates vary. Now as I already mentioned that the tectonic plates are not static but they move constantly and this image shows the various movement of tectonic plates. See the tectonic plates might converge. See in this image we can see that the tectonic plates are converging that is they are moving closer. In the second image we can see that the tectonic plates are diverging that is they are moving in opposite direction from a singular point. In the last image we can see that the plates are gliding past each other that is they are just sliding past each other. So we can find three major types of movement in tectonic plates. The tectonic plates either converge diverge or slide past each other. Now let us discover what causes these tectonic plates to move. Think of a boiling soup. The soup gets heated up from below so the vegetables rises after being lighter and when they reach up they become cooler and heavier and they sink down. After sinking down they are again heated up and this process continues and this is known as convection. A similar phenomena takes place within the earth's interior. We know that the earth's core is super hot and it heats the rocks lying above it. The hot molten material being lighter rise up and after reaching the surface they become cooler and heavier and they sink down and again they are heated up and they rise up. So this process continues and they set up convectional currents within the mantle. Now gravity also plays an important role in the movement of tectonic plates. What does the gravity do? The gravity pulls the cooler and heavier plates downwards and the hotter and lighter plates are not affected by gravity that much. So gravity and convection together goes hand in hands and gravity is the natural force for convection. Now to gravity and convection together cause movement of tectonic plates. So therefore due to convection and gravity the tectonic plates move within the earth and due to these movement of tectonic plates the earth split it into various continents millions of years ago and led to the formation of new world where we live in today. So in this video we learned about the continental drift theory and plate tectonics. We learned that these two theories are correlated. Now we already know that the earth's interior is differentiated into three major layers. The outer layer is called crust, the middle layer is called mantle and the innermost layer is called core. And due to this differentiation, 
the process of continental drift and plate tectonics exist now these activities within the earth's interior or the movement of plate tectonics leads to the formation of various landforms at the surface of the earth to be more clear because of plate tectonics we have volcanic eruptions and these volcanic eruptions leads to the formation of various landforms so the activities within the earth's interior defines the exterior of the earth so in this video we learned about continental drift theory we learned that continental drift theory is formulated by alfred wegener then we learned about various evidences that authenticates the continental drift theory then we also discussed that a major cause for continental drift is the plate tectonics then we learned about various movements of plate tectonics and we learned that due to earth's differentiation convectional currents occur in the earth's interior which causes the plates to move and due to this movement of tectonic plates the continents drifted millions of years ago and led to the formation of the new world where we live in today don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now